Um, and we've had several questions. I know that you talked about it a little bit, but several questions wanting to really compare CyberKnife with GammaKnife. And I know you talked a little bit more about that um, even during your talk, but um, can you go through that again? Because we're getting that yeah. uh, multiple yeah. times. <laughs> so CyberKnife does a lot. So the CyberKnife, the CyberKnife is great uh, for a lot of things, I think. And in medicine, especially in neurosurgery, it's very hard to prove one's better, one unless one's super, super good and the other's super bad, it's mm -hmm. very, very hard to show that there's any real difference. And not a lot of people have experience on both platforms. So it's also very hard to get an objective, truly objective opinion. Everybody sort of got their favorites. I would say intuitively, they're both excellent for cancer. In my opinion, they're both great for brain metastases. Um, I, th I think CyberKnife is a wonderful platform. I don't have a lot of experience. I have no experience on a CyberKnife machine, but it's a linear accelerator. So intuitively, the way I think of it is I'd say, okay, CyberKnife is very good, hasn't been around quite, a, quite as long as GammaKnife and can be converted to do other things, which means it's got some moving parts and pieces. There's this big arm that rotates around. There's shielding that has to go on inside the machine. Sometimes people use masks instead of skull pins on a CyberKnife more often than a GammaKnife. So for me, if you introduce any variables, you have to accept a little bit of error. Maybe not enough to make a difference, but as soon as you start moving more things and using a mask where you could have a millimeter of head shift, I personally, if it were in my brain, I'd be like, well, if I'm treating something small, benign, and really close to important stuff, which acoustic neuromas are, I'd prefer to reduce the variability of the machine that I'm on I like to know that you've got a vast experience of data to quote me. Um, and I'd like to know that it's pretty much dedicated to brain surgery. So although I can't prove that that's better, and, and I think you can get both camps to argue they're just as good, I don't think there's any data to say that CyberKnife's better than GammaKnife or that GammaKnife's necessarily better than CyberKnife. I think within statistical reasoning, they're close. I would just say intuitively with anything complicated, the more variables I can reduce, and the more dedicated I can be to doing only one thing really well, mm -hmm. like the Hugh Jackman, you know, Brishnikov analogy, I would say, well, you just know intuitively, you would assume this machine's got to be at least as good as a cyber knife, if not better. I couldn't necessarily argue the opposite. Okay. Does that um, answer the question? Or it is does. That a little yeah, bit? yeah, okay. no, that it, it does. I think, um, I think it's great. There's not um, as many gamma knives around. So just to, I'll go off on my side note here for one second. Mm -hmm. You won't find as many gamma knives around. And here's why. The reason is because the gamma knife only does one thing really well. It isn't always utilized as much in a healthcare system. So if you have a machine that can be converted to help more patients, sure. you could understand and be like, well, I'd rather use the cyber right. knife. If they're mm -hmm. equal, I'd rather be able to use this. If I only have one day of, of brain stuff, and I have prostate cancer, something else I want to treat. If this machine can do both of them well, I'd rather use something that's more versatile. So I think you'll hear more advertising and you'll see more of those machines because they can be used more often by the system for more patients. Okay, that makes sense. We just had a question about why someone would choose or what the situation would be for someone to choose fractionated radio surgery over 